Every day, you essentially pay your dues by doing the harder thing when it's the right thing to do. The first thing we have to remember, and this is absolutely essential, everything in the lecture series for the next four, you know, however many hours this ends up being, but everything that comes forward after this is based on this simple equation, okay? The proper dosage of stress added to the proper dosage of recovery is how humans adapt, right? So whether that adaption means um, jumping higher, whether that means running faster, whether that means getting a, a new skill, whether that means hitting a routine that you need the cardio endurance for, whether that means uh, learning something new in school, whether that means uh, mentally uh, being ready for a meet and managing some so, uh, some anxiety that comes with uh, the pressure of competition, adapting your brain to deal with coping strategies, every single thing we do comes down to this proper dosage of stress and recovery, whether that's learning, whether that's working out, whether that's having a hard conversation, it all is based on this equation, okay? Now, that being said, I like this analogy here that you know aspirin is, is really, really helpful for a headache unless you don't take any or unless you take 40, right? If you have too much or too little, sorry, there's not going to be an adaptation, right? If you don't do anything to stress the body to get ready, you're not going to be prepared, right? If you don't take any aspirin, it's never going to help your headache, right? So you actually do need to train hard and you need to train intelligently to make sure that you're getting prepared for the thing that's coming up, right? Whether that's skills, a new skill, you need to be properly uh, stressed with strength conditioning to be prepared to do those skills uh, and handle those forces, right? You need to be mentally prepared and do your work and do your homework to know the information to take a test, right? It's the exact same thing. If you don't do enough, you won't be prepared. Vice versa, if you do too much, you're probably going to have a poor performance because you're not going to have the, the readiness that you need, but there's also a, an elevated risk of injury and burnout and, and emotional problems like either uh, high, high degrees of anxiety or burnout and depression. That's very, very common, right? So problems can happen on both sides of the coin, and I think that's so, so key to remember for everything we talk about moving forward is that we're trying to find that nice sweet spot, that middle balance between not crushing people, but not doing nothing and not being ready for the thing that we want to compete in or do or, or you know, some people compete. Compete. So essentially what they did is they took a group of gymnasts and they tested them on their uh, physical abilities test, right? So leg lifts, push-ups, um, box jump, uh, pull-ups, like all sorts of very gymnastic specific body weight things. And they essentially uh, did the testing and they did what they would consider a very hard workout. So their hardest day of the week, they went really, really crazy. I'm not sure whether they were doing routines or whether they were doing just a lot of volume of skill work, but they were doing everything, right? And then they did their normal conditioning, their normal warm-ups, everything. And they measured how many days it took them to fully recover from that hard workout. And the metric was when you return to baseline of how many pull-ups and push-ups and stuff you can do, that's probably a good proxy of, you know, your, your physical ability and your ability to recover. Okay. And the interesting finding here was that the majority of the people in this group, and again, it's only 15 kids. It's one small little gym, but it took the majority of the kids, uh, two to three days to fully recover. I mean, like completely get back to their baseline. And now what this means is, it's very unique to this group of athletes, right? Where maybe they don't have, maybe they have the worst recovery methods of all times. Maybe they don't sleep. They don't uh, do any stress management techniques. They don't feel themselves for performance. Maybe they're just like the worst recoverers of all time. Who knows? But essentially what you need to take away is that it needs time, right? You cannot expect someone to be fresh as a daisy and, and max, have all their power and all their speed and all their energy after a really, really hard workout, right? So it doesn't mean you can't train hard. It doesn't mean you can, can't train back-to-back -back days. It just means that we have to be intelligent. We have to respect biology, like I said, and think logically about maybe alternating light days with medium days, with heavy days, with off days to get the most net equation of, of the athlete's performance. Okay. okay no, this is a super helpful graph. Um, so seeing here at the baseline, right, essentially, if you're, if you're just listening, um, across the straight line, we have a baseline and then you have a, a load is applied to the athlete that dips them down below this line. Okay. And they hit the, the bottom of what their stressors were. You have a recovery period when you come back up to this baseline. If you are doing well with, you know, the proper dosage of stress and you also have, like I said, sleep and stress management techniques and feeling for performance and water, uh, and, and your other t time of your life is balanced well, you can super compensate and you can actually get stronger. This green line will get you above baseline to hold you up over here. So now you're either you're more fit or you're uh, maybe stronger or you're more intelligent or you have more mental confidence or you're more emotionally you know, resilient. The next time that stressor is applied, it dips you down, but it does not dip you down uh, below the baseline you were before. You can super compensate again, right? This is the basics of getting stronger and fitter and new skills and learning and kind of growing and stuff like that. However, as you can see here, if we apply a load too soon or if we don't allow a proper recovery environment 
or we are just chronically stressing someone too much multiple days in a row, we will continue to go downhill and we'll spiral kind of where we're not recovering enough and we constantly run down the road, which is you can't deal with the training load, but also you're more risk. Uh, your risk elevates of injury and illness and burnout, right? So this is overtraining, Why, right? There's okay. a, we all may know there are more, there are two sides to our nervous system, right? So we have the kind of on, which is the sympathetic nervous system, which is about like fight or flight or freeze. You guys have probably all heard this before. You know, you, you think about a presentation, you're about to do a routine, you are about to take a really hard test, right? Your, your, your heart rate goes up, your palms sweat a little bit, you, you start to, you know, get your, your alertness is open. That's the sympathetic nervous system ramping you up for something, okay? That happens every single time we do a hard workout or we're doing a skill or a turn or we're, we're trying to have a hard conversation. That's what we're designed to do. That is the stressor system kind of helping us out. The other half of that where the recovery and the adaptation occurs is called our parasympathetic nervous system, which is more the rest and digest side, okay? So that is where... Again, your body adapts. That's where your body repairs itself from a hard workout. It's where your body, you know, rests and kind of processes the things that you've learned and during your sleep cycles or when you're relaxing, when your mind is wandering a little bit, it kind of makes the connections and builds new building blocks for those things. So we need balance here, right? If we go all all on all the time, that's never gonna get adaptation. We're gonna burn somebody out. If we're all off all the time, we're never working hard, we're never gonna get to our goals, right? So you have to have this flip-flop back and forth. Our body is designed for this rapid onset, deal with the stressor and cope, and then it wrap it down, deal and now shift into more of like a relaxed position, right? Think about between turns, right? You do a really hard turn, you do something, and then you rest and you just chill for a second, go do a drill, then you get back up, you try it again. Same thing with really, really hard training weeks or really, really hard training months. Get ramped up, do the meet, and come down, relax, get your body to chill, okay? So by intelligently and specifically planning times when we can recover and do things we enjoy, it keeps the mental and emotional burden lower on athletes, but it also physiologically helps them adapt as best as possible and, and you know make sense of the hard stressor they did to get stronger, to get fitter, to learn new skills, all that kind of stuff. Okay. <laughs>